Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Metroid Prime with me, the Doctor. In the last episode, we got ourselves missiles by defeating the kind of hive totem, and so now that's unlocked a few new areas. So if we look at the map, just to show you what I'm going to be doing, we're heading quickly back to here, the main plaza. So, well, I'm going to do something fancy here. I'm going to cut over there, and you're going to see a visualizer of how I'm traveling over there. So, catch you at the main plaza. So in future, that- oh, there's a beetle. In future, that is what I'm going to do for kind of, that little visualizer will be what I do when I'm doing backtracking. Because this game has a fair bit of backtracking in it. And I don't mean that in at all a negative way. That's just, that is the nature of this kind of style of game. I mentioned last episode, so it's called Metroidvania. Uh, because it's popularized by the Metroid games and the Castlevania games. But essentially, that involve, a, essentially, you explore what you can, eventually get a power-up. Like here, we just got missiles, so we can open this missile door. Upon doing so, you can then explore new areas, and then eventually you'll find a new power-up, which will open up new areas and stuff like that. Aha! A scan we haven't got before. Behold. These are missile ammunition. Five units of missile ammunition. Um, restored. You could scan these on the Frigate Orphean, I just didn't- Oh, bloody scarabs! You can, to be honest, you can run through scarabs, and when you touch a scarab, it dies, and the chances of it dropping a thing- Good one. Chance of it dropping a- energy unit are pretty high, so you can run through them and you'll actually often heal more than you'll actually take damage. Anyway, there's something over there. Look at that, isn't that exciting? Anyway, if we hop down... Oh, this feels very Zelda, doesn't it? Hey! So, we're swarmed by actually a fairly large amount of beetles. Missiles can help you do a bit of splash damage here, and these guys give you fairly high frequency of pickups when you kill them, to the point where my ten missiles will hopefully regenerate themselves enough, but, like, it's... There's no, never really much harm in this, especially if you're following this guide along and getting a fair few missiles as we go along. There's n like missile expansions even. A lot of the time you won't really run low on missiles, so you should probably use them when you get a chance. Anyway! That's an ugly bastard, isn't it? God, what's the face and what's the ass there? Well, I guess the point of it on the front is the face, because that's what he faces us with. There's no eyes or anything like that. It's just metal. Well, like, oh shit, armoring. Anyway, let's scan it. So this is the plated beetle, well-armored, burrowing insect, vulnerable only in the rear abdomen. Rear ab abdomen is kind of unnecessary. A uh, creature's thick cranial plating can repel frontal attacks. This gives it an advantage in combat, allowing it to make ramming attacks. Only surfacing when it detects vibrations above, it then maneuvers itself so as to always face its rival, keeping its exposed abdomen protected. So now we learn a new little trick. It's saying that we can hold left and right and tap A to dash while locked on. So basically- Oh, fuck. Basically, yes, I did it there, but badly. We can do a kind of like sidestep, like it's doing. And we can use it to dodge out the way of this thing, because we basically have to wait until it kind of twitches and roar. There's a little thing it does where it twitches and squeaks. There! And at that point, you can do what we did there, which is sidestep round it. As long as you're Z-targeting, you'll stay focused on it. And so then you'll kind of spin around and you'll be facing its back. Oh, I don't know why he's just wandering over there, but hey. Also, you'll notice an interesting thing. Though this is a boss, you'll notice on the top visualizer that comes down for scans. The boundary is yellow if it's a normal scan, like you can get any time, or it's red if it's a one-time only scan. And this one, unusually, for a mini-boss, is not red. You get another chance later in the game to scan the plated beetle. Don't worry if you killed it there. It's fine. Anyway, there's something there. Can you guess what it's- Oh, I've got another scan here because we haven't seen one of these before. Check it. This is large energy, replenishes 20 units. Fancy that. Anyway, let's hop up and grab this thing. So, Morph Ball reacquired. Hopefully by the end of this episode I intend to have, uh, have got all the stuff back that we lost on Frigate Orphean. I don't even know why they bothered doing that. Anyway, uh, we can now roll through this kind of thing that gets us out, because um, you can't actually get out there. That's kind of stop you leaving that area without having got the Morph Ball, which would be extremely impressive. Anyway, this kind of like actually now opens up a new area back here. Well, not... Essentially, there was an area we could have accessed before, but wouldn't have got anywhere with. Uh, there's no point cutting that because we were literally just one little bit away. Um, like, you'll see what I mean when we get up here, because essentially, if we come around there and up and over that bridge and over to there, there's another door that we haven't gone through. It's not locked or anything like that, but had we tried to proceed through it, bad shit would have happened. Oh, yay! Ram War Wasps. I'm very... I'm of mixed minds what I think about the music in Chozo Ruins, because it's very... it is very basic. Like, it's just kind of like... it's very... it's a similar kind of feel to Mass Effect, of just kind of being more... as much sound effect as it is music. It's quite interesting, but not my favourite. And this this game does generally, I, in my opinion... See, need more ball to get through there. 
This game does, in my opinion, have very good music, like very standout, classically Nintendo music, and this is just a very odd one to start us off with. Wow, we had the music in the kind of Talon Overworld, but we didn't get to hear much of that, unfortunately, because that's great. Anyway, there are things in here. There is, well, these little plasmite things we've seen already, but there's this central kind of fountain, which is choked by overgrowth. Toxin levels are high, so obviously that means the water and stuff in here is poisonous as well, but there's this Chozo Law! Uh, so this is purification. The surges of negative energy brought by the meteor, meteor far exceed our expectation. We Chozo have yet to find a way to rid ourselves of the great poison. All we can do for now is seal it away and wait for the day when a power to purify the poison appears. Power to purify the poison appears? Good lord. However, it is already impossible to collect all the pieces of the great poison that is already spread, seeping into the planet and hardening. So yeah, like, it's clear from this, though it's never really explained exactly how it happens, but it's clear that the Chozo who lived here aren't here anymore, but you only get the kind of hints as to what happened to them through those, um, through the kind of particular, uh, shit, what am I trying to say? Um, ah, I was trying to shoot and not fall in the lava and talk at the same time, and it didn't end well. By lava, I mean poisoned water. But yeah, like, you only get hints- OH NO! Oh, shh, well, there was a new enemy that we nearly scanned before it died. They're a tricky one to scan, because they're really fast. Well, we'll come across more of them later on anyway. Smash through the missile door. And we are now into this place with another new enemy we can scan. This is a new creature. This is a Reaper Vine, a powerful rock-dwelling tentacle. A single eye upon the Reaper Vine keeps a constant vigil, but its vision is limited to 10 meters. A scythe-like appendage on its tip is home to lethal sharpness. The Reaper Vine will swing a blade wildly at anything that enters its zone of perception. So, obviously, the way to stop that is give it a little shot. It'll retract in, only temporarily. I think you get about, like, 20 seconds or something like that. And we can extend along this way. As you can imagine, ground in here. Poisoned, again. Everywhere is poisoned around here. A uh, bit of a running theme. Oh! Didn't make it! Oh, dear! Oh, dear! Ooh. Got a good thing I grabbed that extra energy, just, uh, uh, energy tank. So, apparently we can't make that jump. What we need to do is go up here. Now we know. It's all about... It's a learning experience, uh, says the guy who's played this game. A lot. Uh, still learning. Now you know. Ow, that's what happens when you jump into a Reaper Vine. I thought there was only one, and I didn't, didn't see the lower one here. Let's head through this missile door again. And into this extremely claustrophobic corridor. It's like exactly the same width as us. That's pretty cool. Well, it's not cool. It's actually slightly freakish. Anyway, if we come up here, this is a fairly big room. There's a lot going on here. But if we come through here, through the missile door again. Save station! And we'll call the episode... No, we won't. That's shitty. The first two episodes have been fairly short, so I think this one is actually going to be a longer episode anyway. So I'm just healing since I've got this save station here. Anyway, back in the kind of... Back in this room... There is a door down- oh! Psh, oh shit, I didn't mean to use missiles there, I meant to- oh. I meant to scan the things, but didn't get a chance to- and I'm out of missiles now. Um, well, I shouldn't need missiles for anything immediately soon, but I'm gonna kill everything in this room just in the hope that it does drop missiles. Anyway, what we need to do now is a fun little platforming section. By fun, I mean it's fun if you enjoy platforming sections, which I quite do, and I'm just kind of still in the- oh! Ah, got it. There we go. These are Shriek Bats, territorial ceiling dwellers. But territorial ceiling dwellers. Body temperature peaks at 121 degrees centigrade. Shriek Bats have high internal temperatures, making them easy to spot with thermal imaging. They roost on cave ceilings while hunting for small prey. Fiercely territorial, they dive bomb everything that wanders near. There are a lot of enemies in this that sacrifice themselves for no real reason. Very odd ecosystem that's evolved here on Talon 4. Anyway, there's this little kind of thing here that if we scan it, it gives us a little hint. The path of corruption leads ever higher. Which is basically a way of saying, continue platforming, you're doing well. Um, and yeah, this is... This is one of the bits where this game gets a bit kind of non-linear, and like, I could proceed through there, like through the lower door, and get lost and not really know where I'm going. Oh, shriek bats, shriek bats, shriek bats. They come out of nowhere. Aha! Oh, oh. I'm just going to use the charge beam to draw in those missiles, but unfortunately, don't have a charge beam. Uh, uh, tease it. Tease it. Oh, fuck it! Well, I got three missiles. It was almost worth it. Ugh. I'll get back up to the top. Actually, I was going to cut there, but actually, it's really short. Uh, then we can just sneak through here with the morph ball. And then, oh, more shriek bats. God, they keep coming out of nowhere, don't they? Hey, more missiles. That's, ah, the shriek bats. Not a fan. Of ah! Shit. Well, now I'm going to have to cut up to the top. That was stupid. The fat oh jump fat mm. Oh, why am I having so much trouble with this? I like platforming. Well, after four attempts, I'm finally at the top of a relatively simple platforming section. So, 
Go me, I guess. One thing you will notice in the game are lots of these kind of like small little tunnel-y things. It's basically a trick with this game to make the most of the GameCube's very limited memory and basically these little kind of access tunnels. The game just has them, has them as like loading sections so that you'll, one thing you'll notice with this game is once you fight it up from the main menu, no loading screens, ever. And they just kind of do, a, they're very clever with the kind of loading as they go along. Anyway, there's a lot going on here involving shriek bats and poisoned and crap down there, but we can't really do much of that now, so it's just kind of, there's this little snickety bit to the left, and we can actually, oh, no, no, I nearly jumped in the poison trying to get out of the way. The shriek bats, am I not in the, oh, there's a little step that I'm standing on. Yeah, you can kind of come around all the side of these ways and avoid pretty much that entire room. We will need to be back here, I'm just going to say late, short, uh, shortly, but actually it's, I was going to say shortly because it will be shortly. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Anyway, now we are in the Burn Dome access. Well, now we're actually in the Burn Dome. Now, this is a really odd boss. This is... Structural weak now. <laughs> scanned the wrong damn thing, didn't I? Do scan this now, because you won't get another chance. This is the incinerator drone, programmed for high temperature waste disposal. Device schematics indicate a high risk of malfunction when internal power goes damaged. Unit has a minimal combat programming, but can defend itself if necessary. This drone's intense heat blasts compensate for its lack of battle prowess. And so you just kind of need to dodge it. It's like some total wipeout shit. If those things spin around and you can actually morph ball underneath them. Oh, shit, apparently you can't. You normally can. Maybe I just sucked. Anyway, when its top is exposed, Take a few shots at that. After you've done enough damage, it fires up into the ceiling. What does that do, you ask? Well, it pisses off the war wasps that are up there. Again, scan these war wasps. This is a new species of war wasp, and you only get this one chance to scan them. These are barbed war wasps. Airborne insect with the ability to launch its stinger at prey. A highly aggressive member of the war wasp family, this insect can propel the tip of its stinger up to 20 meters. The stinger tips regrow seconds after launch and contain an acidic compound designed to pre digest prey. How unpleasant. So now you've got the kind of annoying eyes. Ah, see, now that thing's now starting to go at different angles, you can kind of focus on this thing in the center and use that to kind of time your jumps over it. But generally, the, my advice is obviously keep an eye on the flames, but focus on the war wasps because they're a bit more irritating. And also, if you kill them, they'll give you like energy and stuff like that back. And basically, focus on them while the drone is just kind of doing its thing. Um, just keep an eye on the drone. Once the thing sticks out the top, the kind of power core, you're fine. Um, so target that and go nuts, but otherwise the war wasp will piss you off in a way that the drone will just be, ow, mildly irritating. But like a lot of the stuff on this, you won't really take much damage unless you're kind of doing something wrong. Especially if you're following my guide and getting energy tanks as you go along. The risk of death is fairly low in this game. You'd actually have the trilogy version, I'm going to have a choice between veteran and hard mode. Uh, if veteran mode and normal mode. I went for normal mode just because I don't like doing things on anything remotely like hard mode on an LP, because unless that's specifically the point of the LP, it makes just the chance of failure a bit too high, which doesn't always make for great viewing. Anyway, that's the incinerator drone defeated. Unfortunately, it takes out those war wasps with it, and it leaves something behind. Something that utterly does not relate to its function, but hey, we'll take it anyway. Hey, we had these technically in the frigate Orpheum, but I didn't use them at all. These are Morph Ball Bombs. While a Morph Ball Bomb, press A to drop a Morph Ball Bomb. And so there's a little, few little tricks for Morph Ball Bombs. Number one, any walls that look like this kind of like cracked blocks, you can usually Morph Ball Bomb through them. Number two, if you hit yourself with a Morph Ball Bomb, you jump up. Um, and additionally, I think that's only on the kind of trilogy version. If you flick the Wii Remote up, you do a jump anyway. Uh, you can only do that jump with when you've already got Morph Ball Bombs. And it just saves you the effort of having to drop a bomb, but that's only on the trilogy version. And you can just come through here, grab a cheeky missile expansion. Uh, as I say, grab them whenever you can, because especially as you get into the later game, missiles start doing more stuff than just being missiles. You'll understand what I mean when we get to it. So basically, you can have up to... If you get all the missile expansions, you have 255, and that's worth doing uh, for some of the late game shit. So gather them as you go along, because it also avoids backtracking, because that's 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 a lot of that in this game, potentially. Which is why the joy of doing an LP, where I can just edit all that crap out. Anyway, oh, Shriek Bats! To our left here, you can't quite see it, but to our left is a new enemy. This statue. It's not a statue. Yes, this is in fact a creature. This is a Stone Toad. Preys on creatures smaller than itself, vulnerable only from within. The Stone Toad is able to remain still for days. It preys upon creatures smaller than itself, inhaling them whole. Anything it finds undigestible, it regurgitates. Stone Toads use their tusks as a last resort in combat. And I think if you actually... 
Hold on a sec. If you can actually go near it, I think it rams you. Oh, no. Apparently it doesn't. Uh, don't know when it does use its tusk. But approach it as a morph ball and it eats you. Drop a bomb inside it. And that kills it from the inside out. Dude, some guts like float and hit the camera. That was brutal. Anyway, here's something new. This is a little bit of research for a puzzle we're about to do. This is a standard morph ball slot. You just jump into it and use a morph ball bomb to activate a device. And now we enter a bit of a kind of puzzle. I guess I'll just explain it as we go along. It makes more sense. Hop up there and drop a bomb. So that activates the first power core, because this is the energy core is what this room is called. The music starts, the kind of puzzle music, and also you will hear that counting down sound, which means you have a limited amount of time. Come over here to this bit that's now exposed by the water being drained. Drop a second bomb. That activates the second power core and raises these kind of platforms up. As you can hear from the kind of bedding, bedding, you are not done yet. Hop out of morph ball mode and you then need to come up here and with these platforms raised, we can hop over here and oh, oh shit, shit, shit. Uh, might have screwed myself here. Oh, I've oh, definitely screwed myself. Oh, what the, would you, where am I? Well, it, time has actually got me getting much faster. It'd be nice if I actually knew how long I had rather than just hearing bid him, bid him, bid him, bid him, getting, it's like Pokemon low health or something like that. Seem to actually be doing all right. Well, it's going quite fast here, but there's another morph ball slot here. Oh, there, it's going very fast now. Oh, just got it in time. Third power core goes. And that is the end of that little puzzly section. And that opens the lock on that door. That was a, that little six-pointed star thing on it was a lock, I assure you. And raises those platforms so we can get to it. And the poison water's gone now, so... That's why when we were first in here, I was telling you to ignore all this stuff, because this part of a puzzle we couldn't really get through yet. So now, we can head up... At, through here. What was that sound? A shriek bat. Oh, they're probably behind me. Um, so I can just hear me, 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 going on repeatedly. Uh, ignore that thing to the left. We'll come across that much later in the game what it is. This is the furnace access. And through here is the furnace proper. Not much in the furnace, except a free energy tank. I'll take it. Other than that, in the furnace is pretty much nothing. Uh, this is a much more developed area later in the game, so we'll come back here later. But hey, energy tank, always cool. Anyway, let's head back to the gathering hall, the room where the safe station was, because there's more stuff we can do over there now. So back here, I pointed out when we first came here, there was a way that we didn't go. We chose to go up on that annoying platforming section, but just past these blast caps here is this door that we haven't actually been through yet. So this takes us through to the watery hall. Well, it takes us through to the watery hall access while it loads. Uh, you'll see what I mean about these a lot, these kind of like little loading areas, essentially. Ow. We can missile through this wall and grab a missile expansion. I'll point it out next time because it's a bit clearer. It wasn't, I wasn't great at pointing it out then, uh, but there's a sound you can hear that means there's a pickup in the room you're in, like an energy tank or a missile expansion or something like that, that's useful to be aware of. It's a kind of sound. You'll, I'll point it out when you can actually hear it. It makes a lot more sense. Anyway, if we missile through here, then we get into the watery hall. And this is an interesting little bit of, this is, ah, a kind of puzzle of one. Well, first things first, this really has a kind of, this really rem strongly reminds me a lot of the stuff in this game, uh, and in the second game actually, in Echoes, reminds me of the Goron Mines from Twilight Princess. I can't quite say why, but it's something about the kind of metal and slightly like corroded structures. That this is slightly kind of more knackered than that. There's this gate. We scan it. This large metal gate blocks access to the area beyond. Four runic symbols adorn its surface. Matching symbols within this room must be scanned to gain access. So there's kind of four symbols, and you can find them around the place. Um, uh, because if we scan this the first one, it's here. And this runic symbol has been activated. Then if we hop down the second runic symbol, as we can come back along this bottom way, take out these blast caps. And underneath them, once the kind of smoke clears, it, no, not the blast caps, the second runic symbol. Then if we come all the way back to the beginning of the level, ignoring the reaper vine, well, not ignoring it, killing it. Uh, then here above this culvert, this kind of like drainage bit, is the third runic symbol. Ow. And I've missed out one, and I keep jumping in the thing. That was it. We've still never even... Ah! We've still... <laughs> Easy, Doctor. We can do this. Uh, I've still never actually used... Be, be, like, be less one energy tank. Like, we're on 70. We've never got down to zero and had to use one of our energy tanks anyway. Uh, they're just sitting up there. They're kind of like heart container -y things. I'm sure they'll come in useful later. What I meant to do is there's another one below us here. Oh... Damn, I was hoping I could scan it from up here. There's the final one. And that lights up the door. Um, but I'm in no position to open it, so I need to hop back round. Ow. Now, with all of those things scanned, we can scan the centre. 
And the gate has been unlocked. Sweet. Through we go, and there's a few things through here. Firstly, there is Chozo Law. This one is Meteor Strike. Disaster struck suddenly. We had a vague, dark foreboding, and it became truth. A meteor appeared from nowhere, casting a dark shadow of debris over the land with the violence of its impact. Its destructive force spent. The fallen star burned itself out rapidly, and the incident should have faded into memory. But the meteor brought with it corruption. A great poison sped, burst forth into the land, a strange energy that clawed at natural life with ferocity. That strange negative energy emitted from the meteor expanded to encompass Talon 4 in a night as a spider weaves a web. We're kind of getting these out of order a bit, these kind of Chozo lore things, but you can kind of piece the story together from there. Now, once we've got all of them, I will kind of go through the story. But that makes much more sense a lot further in the game. Also, Charge Beam! So yeah, that's what I was saying about this episode. I was meaning to get everything back that was unfortunately stolen from us on the uh, thingy. Frigate Orpheon. So all these ions come alive to kind of make getting back a bit of an ass. But there's a little trick here. This little thing down here. This is unidentifiable obstruction approximately one meter wide blocks the hole. Unidentifiable obstruction, you say? Not anymore! And there's this little kind of tr thing through here. This actually isn't a way to get past the ions, but this takes us to our own little separate room, which is this thing here. Smash through that. And, well, we're going to do one of, one of these little loading things, but I mean, I prefer doing these than actually having loading screens or something like that, because this is a big game with essentially no loading times. And we get into this kind of dynamo room, I think it's called. Not much we can do here, except for over here. Pfft, okay, there's a missile expansion. Apparently that was a bit of a spoiler. I meant to scan this thing that says a sufficient blast trauma will dis likely result in complete destruction. Let's do that. And inside, yep, there we go. Missile expansion up to 25. That's pretty good. And let's just head back now again to the gathering station. No, not the gathering station, gathering hall. So back here, there is just a save station, which is, that's why I said gathering station by accident. And this is a good point as any to end the episode. So this episode, we've got a number of power packs, we've got morph balls, we've got morph ball bombs, we've got the charge beam, we've beaten two bosses. All pretty effective for like 22 minutes. So next episode, we'll be exploring more of the Chozo ruins and attempting to find the source of the kind of poisoned water and all that crap that's everywhere. I've been the Doctor the Infamous Gentleman, and this has been Metroid Prime. Thank you very much, and good day. Yeah.